We are back to work example seven, and I would like to now do the same example, but we're only going to look at this E part. So if I just say use the principle of mathematical induction to prove this proposition. Okay, so I'm going to take this away and I'm going to lead you step by step. Now remember what we said about mathematical induction. We said that first of all, um, a, pro a proposition, a a proposition a pro proposition pn is true under some conditions a proposition p is true um, under certain conditions for all numbers for all natural numbers For all natural numbers, if one p at one exists is true, and secondly, whenever p k is true, uh, p at k is true, and p at k plus one is true. Okay, so that is how what we go on. Just quickly, why we can do this for all natural numbers is we, we are working with terms. And in this, if we're working with terms, all natural numbers, you only get a term 1, term 2, term 3. You can't have zero terms and you can't have negative terms or half terms. And that is why this is only true for natural numbers. Now, I'm going to take you step by step. So our first step, excuse my hand, you can just see when... If I'm done, I'm going to say step one. Step one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to state the proposition. State the proposition. I'm going to start off by saying that Pn, exactly as what they give him, is the sum of 1 over 2r from 1 to n. And we propose or we believe that that is true for this. All right, so that is step one. State the proposition. Step two. Show that show that P at one. So P1 is true, so we're going to prove that. So show that P1 um, is true. With other word, that's step two. So we're going to say when when n equals when n equals one, my left hand side of that equation, my left hand side equals and I'm going to say n is 1, so n is 1, so 1 over 2r, which means if I substitute that one in in there, it's 1 to the power 2 over 1, which equals a half. My right hand side of that equation, which is this side, equals 2 to the power 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power 1. That will give us 2 to the power 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1, which gives us a half, and therefore, since left hand side equals my right hand side, um, p at 1 is true. So I know that my first statement is all good to go. My step 3 now. Step 3 is I assume, I'm going to assume pk is true. I assume that P at K is true. Okay, so that's step three. So let's have a look at what I'm assuming. I'm assuming, I assume, I assume that P over K is, and I'm going to substitute that in, 
the sum of 1 over 2r from 1 to k, because k takes the place of n, equals 2 to the power k minus 1 over 2 to the power k. So I have assumed that. Step 4 is now the proof. Okay, so I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to work my way down. Very unprofessional, but bear with me. So my step 4, I'm going to need all the space I can. So I'm going to say step 4. Step 4 is proof. Proof. Um, P at K plus 1 is true. So we need to, need to prove that. Okay. So, what do I prove? I need to prove that P at K plus 1 is the sum of from 1, K plus 1. So, in the place of N, I'm going to have the K plus 1 of 1 over 2R equals 2 to the power K plus 1 take 1 over 2 to the power k plus 1. That's what I have to prove. So I'm going to work with my left hand side. I'm going to say my left hand side equals, so I'm looking at this, this k plus 1, 1, 1 over 2r. If I look at that, I can say that this equals, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up. I'm going to say k plus 1, it is the same as k so the sum from 1 to k of 1 over 2r plus, and I'm going to have here 1 over, and I'm going to substitute k plus 1 where r is, which is 2 over k plus 1. And there is an explanation for that. If I, as I've explained before, if, if, my, first, if my first term was 1, it means it's 1 over 2 to the power 1. That is if n is 1. If n is 2, it's going to be 1 over 2 to the power 1 plus 1 over 2 to the power 2. N3 will be 1 over 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the, 1 over 2 to the power 3 plus 1 over plus 1 over 2 to the power 3. So, can you see that N3 is N2 plus if I just add 3 there. So if I apply it to what I have here, 2 to the power k plus 1 is the sum of up to k plus if I just substitute the value in there. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now, because I have, because I assumed Because I assumed this, because I assumed this, I can substitute that in there. In other words, I can say, I can say that this equals 2k minus 1 over 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1. Why? Because I said that the sum of that is the same as that. Now I'm going to use algebra to solve this. I'm going to make my common denominator 2k plus 1. Some of you might find this hard to see, but to get this the same as this, all I have to do is I have to multiply by 2. If my bases are the same, I add my exponents. So 2 times 2 to the power k is 1 plus k. If I multiply by 2 underneath the line, I multiply by 2 above the line. So what I'll have is I'll have 2, this is in brackets, so it's times 2k minus 1 plus 1. This equals, and I can simply multiply that out, 2 times 2 to the power k is 2 to the power 2k plus 1. 2 times negative 2, 2 is negative 2, plus 1, over 2k plus 1. 
Well, that's not two k. That is just k plus one. My bad. Okay. Now two k plus one minus two plus one is minus one. So it is two k plus one minus one over two k plus one. And the interesting part now is that this equals that. The thing that I have to prove. Therefore, this equals my right hand side. Because my left hand side equals my right hand side, therefore, P at K plus 1 is true. If P at K is true. And according to my this, whenever P K and P K plus 1 is true, I have solved my proposition. My fifth step, step 5, is my statement. And my statement is that P, the proposition, N, 1 at 1 over 2R, equals 2n minus 1 to 2n is true for all natural numbers for all natural numbers